Hi everyone, I'm going to walk you through HubSpot's SEO tools today. My name is Sarah and I'm a senior growth marketer here at Sex and Flow. To navigate to the SEO tool, you're going to want to go marketing, website, and then SEO. And to see results for your website, you're going to want to scan a new URL and follow the instructions there. To scan a URL, it takes about six hours to one day to complete. And so I'm not going to rescan it right now. And as you can see, I last scanned it about five days ago. We typically recommend rescanning your website about every six months because it's pretty likely you're adding content to your site regularly. And so it's best practice to rescan it and make sure any issues don't arise. HubSpot gathers a few SEO categories on page SEO, mobile experience, crawling and indexing, and then will categorize the issues accordingly. The green is for resolved issues. So there's nothing further that you need to do at this moment. And if you did have some red, it would mean that you need to resolve that issue and you can look at if it requires a marketer developer, technical difficulty and the impact of that change. The next tab is analyze. This is in essence a dashboard or a report of how your site is performing as a whole. You can change which views, so impressions, clicks, average position, click-through rate, and it will share how your website is performing. Next up, we have topics. These are topic clusters. So if we look into RevOps, at the center is your pillar page. In essence, your pillar page is your bumper blog. It mentions all the topics you want to talk about, um, and it can be a blog or a landing page, and then it links back to each of those relevant posts um, that surround the pillar page. It should be noted that each blog should also link back to your pillar page, um, and topic clusters are a great way for you to plan your keyword strategy. If you were to add a subtopic keyword, for example, what is RevOps? You can see the monthly searches and it, HubSpot may also suggest other keywords. You can see half of these are colored in green, which means that the blog links to the pillar page and the pillar page links to the blog. But some of these are red. It could be perhaps that we have just been doing some keyword planning and so haven't built out the blog post yet. Or the other likely option is that we've included a call to action but the link back to the pillar page is not actually linked inside the text. So you may choose to add something along the lines of read here to learn more about revenue intelligence, perhaps, or read here to learn more about RevOps. The content performance tab um, for each topic cluster shows you how that pillar page is performing and how the subtopic content is performing. If it's linked, it'll show in green. And if it's unlinked, you'll need to check the link and it provides, HubSpot provides an overview of how you can quickly resolve that error. So you can see that it's a really useful tool for managing your page and helping your content tell Google that you are the expert in that topic. The other thing I wanted to show you was the optimized tab within each individual blog post. So when you're creating a blog post after you've done writing it, after you've completed it, HubSpot will actually show you how you can optimize it better for SEO. It makes sure you attach the post to the topic cluster and you assign a subtopic keyword to it. It suggests ideas and keywords that you might add to your blog post and ensures that your meta description mentions your keyword, your page body has subtopic phrases, that the page is linked to a topic pillar page, and so forth. It also looks at mobile friendliness, crawling and indexing, title, content, meta descriptions, and more. You can quickly view where issues are arising and how you should change them to ensure that the page is optimized for SEO and you're given the best chance of your posts appearing on Google search results. So hope you found this helpful and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, good luck.